So this video is on uh, question 5 of the POM assignment. So specifically, I will get demand. Yes, I want to utilize this question to analyze how you can approach a question on aggregate demand. So A is saying compute total cost for each aggregate plan using these unit costs. So you have regular outputs, uh, that costs, overtime at that cost, subcontracting is at that cost. And then average balance of inventory is 10 watches. So let's understand all this. How are we going to create an aggregate plan? Well, as you can see, you have been given months from January to June. Yes, so we're also going to create the same table that you're seeing on the screen. And uh, include, of course, the same columns, forecast output, regular, that should be regular output, overtime, and subcontract, everything will put them. In the table as you will even see on uh, what i'm going to do on my next screen so first and foremost remember what i was saying we're going to create the same table that you were seeing on the previous screen so have a look at it this same table that you were seeing on the previous screen now we've like rewritten it then remember our table initially that side was ending on uh was it overtime Okay, it was in on subcontracting, sorry, by the way, it was in on subcontracting, but the reason why I haven't put subcontracting here is that I know it's zero throughout. So even though they've attached a cost to it, there will be no need, if you get what I mean, huh? to be just zero. That's why I've left out that row of subcontract, but the rest have put back everything the way it was. So we have overtime, so at least you know you can be able to tell me the overtime cost because it's already there, like they've given you the overtimes in each month, so that would be very easy to come and compute. Take note that we also have regular, so at least the cost for regular will also be easy to compute. And take note that we also had uh, one more thing they were mentioning there, which was uh, average, average inventory. How do you get average inventory? Because this, it was part of the question. Now, how do you get it? This is what I want to demonstrate so that you can understand how you get average inventory. So an understanding of average inventory is that you should have opening stock plus closing stock divided by two opening closing stock and divided by two how do you find opening how do you find closing that's the next question well take note that usually in the first period like the first month being january here if the question doesn't say anything then you know the opening is zero but most of the time the question will instruct you that okay there is no opening stock therefore it will be zero now, how do you find closing? Because once you know closing of the first period, you know, as you go to the next month, it will become your opening. There's that sequence. Huh? Whatever closes in a month, opens in the, in the next. That's, that's something you should understand about uh, stock. So let's start with this formula, how to get closing stock. So there's this formula, which is ET minus, minus 1, which is just standing for the previous month's stock. Okay? The previous month's maybe closing stock or something, huh? then you're going to add this with uh, the production minus the demand. That's the formula that we use to find closing stock of any given period or any month in this case. So this one, as I mentioned, it's just basically the closing stock of any previous month. So let's say we're in Jan. The question, as I earlier stated, did not say anything about, no, there was opening stock of so much, and that's what we would have expected to put here on ET minus one because you were looking at a previous period, maybe it could have been December of the last year. Now they didn't say anything, so therefore this would be zero. As we even start Jan, it would be zero. So then you start plus what does P stand for? It's just a production or the regular output. In this case, I'm calling it regular output. So that's what you would still put here on production, which they put as 300 in January. Demand was also 300. Remember, we're subtracting the brackets. So zero plus zero, you know that you should have actually zero but take note of one thing we had overtime that overtime that you are seeing 20 20 20 20 those were units first of all let's understand that those were units and uh, since they were units it's like overtime it's that, it's that extra component huh, that you had on that extra week so since you had overtime of 20 even in january meaning you can add it on here to see what you're going to end up with huh? As a closing maybe for a given period so it's just a scenario that whenever you have overtime please remember that uh, we get to add that to this formula we just add it on 
Yeah, it's just that this one had overtime. If there was no overtime, I would have just said closing stock is zero. Because this is the formula. This one I'm just saying here. This is the formula for finding closing stock of any given month. Now we just discovered that there was overtime, therefore it's 20. Or when it closes 20. So you would go to Feb. Same formula. You know you're searching with your 20. You have a 300 plus is a 20. Okay. Minus the 320 in that period. What have I done here? Why am I adding a 20? What have I done? Well, there was another overtime. Remember, there is overtime. We have to we have to remember to keep adding overtime. Because it's there, if you get what I mean. So, it's like I've said this period with the 20 from the previous period. Because, you know, the way stock works is that what closes the period will be shown as an opening. So, always remember on ET minus 1, we are just basically substituting what is coming from a previous period which is now from Jan, and we know January closed with a 20, and we are coming to Feb with a 20. I'm sure I get, yeah, we'll get this now. Plus, now, the brackets, it's P minus D. Now, I said production was okay. The production okay was regular output, 300. It was constant throughout, but demand has changed to 320. But let's not forget that Feb equally had what? Overtime. That's why I'm adding it to the 20 here. So, we find that at the end of the day, again, we are closing with how much? 20. Okay, we are closing the 20, and you would say February equally, the closing is what? It's 20. I hope we're following through. And the sequence will continue. You go to the other one, March. So let me just show you how the solution is now looking. Now we're writing these openings and closing from what I've said here. So as I was trying to even say earlier on in the previous screen, huh? look at what I've written, opening and closing there, those two. Showing you that what? As we were showing the formula, Opening stock we saw that in January we started with zero. That's why it's zero there. As we said from the previous period being maybe last year December, they didn't say anything. That's why it's zero. But take note what did we close with? We closed with a 20. As I explained that January closed with a 20 because of overtime, we went to Feb. Feb started with a, a 20, yes, as we saw in the formula. But we we still closed with a 20. Again, you saw how I substituted in the formula. Okay, what will February close with? It will still close the 20 when I substituted in that formula, if you still remember. So that's what's just happening. The whole point is just never forget over time. That's all. Yeah, that's when it's there, this is how you approach it. Just remember when there's over time, just keep on adding it to the regular output. Huh? Keep on adding it to the regular output. Keep on, keep on adding it. So that you, you don't get a wrong closing stock at the end of the day in that formula. And that's how the figures have come about. So basically, that's how you get opening and closing. Just remember, opening, okay, opening will start the trend that when you're starting in January, okay, the question is anything about opening or nothing. Okay, then you start zero as we started. Then when you go to February, you now know that, okay, what's closed in a period becomes the opening in the next period, and it will be easier to substitute on opening just like that. The only one that you keep calculating for is closing because that's the formula that is outlined for it. Now, once you have opening and closing, it's very easy to get average. Remember the formula I stated for average inventory. It's opening stock plus Closing stock, divide by 2. And that's what was happening in that column which is written average inventory at the bottom there. I was basically adding opening plus closing, huh? 20 plus 0 is 20. Like this or in general, 20 plus 0, 20, divide by 2, 10. That's the figure I'm seeing there. The other one, 20 plus 20, 40, divide by 2, 20. That's how we find average. It's very simple. Yeah, then from there, there were costs. Huh? What you can just start doing now is that... You have to now start multiplying the costs that were attached up there. So you can just start repeating the names or oh, regular output costs now because they give you a cost for regular outputs. It was that uh, that 35, huh? that 35 quarter. So you start multiplying 35 quarter by all the regular outputs in, in each month. Okay, Since uh, you're trying to get the costs per month. So you start multiplying 35 times what's regular? Regular was 300. So you multiply 35 times 300. It gives you the 10, 5, the one you're seeing below. You put the next one. The next month, again, okay, so that regular is the same throughout. So you can just, you know, the answer will be the same in the rest of the months. And those are the figures you are seeing here. You go to overtime. Overtime had what? Overtime was 20 quarter. Oh, sorry, overtime was 20, 20, 20, 20 per month. What was the cost for overtime? 55 quarter. Equally, you have overtime of 20 times 55. So you can know the total overtime cost in each month. And that's the 1,100 you're seeing in each and every month. So, basically, this is the sequence going on here. Even have average inventory, it's, they give you a cost. It was 10 quarter, 
then go check of what of the average inventory so you have found average inventory for each month as you can see there 10 20 20 it's just a matter of starting to now multiply 10 times 10 quarter it's also 10 quarter the average inventory cost so 10 times 10 that's 100 that's 100 just in january you go the next one the average inventory is 20 20 times 10 200 and that's the sequence what do you do at the end of the day sum up because you know you're trying to derive the total cost from this entire aggregate plan you know an aggregate uh, plan considers everything that will take place in all the months and then you sum up their costs so it's, that's why it's called an aggregate you're taking into consideration a lot of things as the term it in itself denotes huh? everything from jan to june all the costs that we have just found i was summing them up as you can see summation 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 in each month then just add up all the costs and you get 70,200 so basically if you've seen the approach taken in this video just trying to make you understand how you can approach this basically that's how you this is how you prepare an aggregate plan just like this you look at the components given in the question you rewrite them in your answer sheet and then determine the costs just like we've done like we just started repeating the same names but now putting there their costs now regular or regular was 300 now let's put the cost for regular in each month just like what we've done here yeah then the cost gave me 70,200 but hey, this is basically how it had to be answered